Hello, Valeria. Thank you for joining our tech part. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. It's great uh, uh, chatting with you up close because we've uh, chatted online and uh, we've sent some messages back and forth. I saw your work, uh, but uh, we've never had the chance to, to talk together. It's great. Yes, thank you very much for accepting uh, my invitation. And you're my first guest for uh, 2023. So, ah, that's great. Yeah, it's a huge pleasure. The, so a Greek gonna... expression is is uh, podariko is uh, is to give um, a good uh, you know good fortune because it's your first guest, your first visitor. So yeah, it's an honor. Thank you. Same on my end. So George, I see I'm following you on Twitter and on Reartoshi where you're posting uh, your art and some of your art. I would like to know more about it. When did you start creating art and how did you join maybe uh, the Bitcoin uh, world? Uh, well, I've been making art for a few years now, so it has nothing to do with, uh, with Bitcoin actually. I'm a writer. I've written some books and uh, well, the simple fact is that you need cover art for books, right? Uh, so, for example, these. Um, so you, the, the idea is that you buy the rights from the artist and uh, they allow you to use uh, your, their art on your uh, book, right? But uh, I, as soon as I, I was trying to make some more books and I was trying to, to get the art that I liked, I, I had a weird um, uh, interaction. I reached out to Beeple, you know, the famous guy, Beeple, with, uh, who, does, who had the most uh, uh, valuable um, NFT sale of all time. It was like $60 million. And I reached out to him and he was a great guy. And he actually gave me the, I paid him for uh, licensing and I used some of his uh, 3D art on, on some of my books. I don't have a printed one right now, but they're all online. And um, I used uh, some of his uh, 3D art on my covers and uh, I liked it. And I was inspired to, to start exploring and trying out my own. I had tried to do some 3D art a few years ago, but the programs were very hard to master. The learning curve is very steep on 3D programs. I happened to stumble upon uh, Daz 3D, Daz, it's Daz Studio, which is uh, more focused on people and um, models and human models and things like that. And you don't make everything from scratch. And that one uh, fits my my mind for my mindset uh, a lot better. And I started trying it, and um, I started making art on my own, which at some point became good enough to be on my on my cover art on my stories. So if you go and uh, browse through my book catalog, uh, you will uh, see plenty of different things. For for example, this is digital artwork. I didn't make this. Um, and you will see a shift uh, later on, which is full 3D art. And um, you will see, this, this is my art station, yeah. And uh, as you browse it, I basically publish pretty much everything. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see the very first couple of 3D pieces that I made. And uh, at some point I was making one per day or at least was trying to make one per day. And uh, you can actually see the improvement on, uh, on uh, me figuring out the program, the, the DAZ Studio, and uh, being able to create something that is actually worth uh, publishing and using as a cover art and making a, a rather good piece of art that, that will draw the eye, you know? And um, yeah, this is the good phase, the part that you're scrolling through. Um, I was experimenting with a lot of uh, various stuff, as you can see. Um, what helps me a lot is that I've done some um, 
filmmaking. I've, I've been to filmmaking school to become a TV director, basically. But uh, that didn't work out. But the skills that I got from learning how to light a shot, uh, how to use cameras, how to do composition, um, how to try and even do storytelling with a single frame, because that's a big part of it, right? Um, so all, all these skills translate very well into this. So I use this in the 3D world right now. Now you've scrolled all the way down to the first stuff that I made. So all these are the basic stuff that uh, I've made uh, as soon as I started. And uh, yeah, they, they're all mature for like for partial uh, like nudity and uh, stuff like that. They're not very naughty. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm sure you can you can show most of them. Um, so yeah, this is like a, I was trying to make a scene. Th these are the very first things posted four years ago. So yeah, I didn't even remember that. So that's when I started. Th those are what I made uh, in a single day. I was making stuff pretty much every single day and uh, trying to to post uh, things online. You can actually see the timeline in the beginning of my art station uh, portfolio. Right. Right. Four years ago. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. You have a wonderful art. And as you have mentioned, your experience uh, with because beca uh, becoming a film director and that's what you initially have started working in the movie industry, for sure. Is supporting uh, you a lot with that what you're doing right now. And also with uh, writing all these stories and closing the circle by, because it's actually only you who can uh, create the best art for your book and for your story. That's what is making me very curious. And I would say I'm impressed by the fact you are 90% from your art is uh, connected with women. And there was a women in your art in general. Well, okay, I, I just I just like it. I like uh, I like women a lot. I like pinups, pinups. You know the classic style of uh, like uh, sexy. You know this is for example is a pinup. Um, yeah, so I may I mostly make artwork that has to do with uh, with women. And uh, I find uh, that it's much prettier, you know, and it's very inspiring. And I end up making a lot more art when it has to do with, uh, with women in general. Yeah. The stories are not all about women, my stories. This, I consider this one to be quite pretty, for example, the yes. earlier one. Yes. Um, so yes, these these are just uh, me playing around with uh, various three D stuff because there are many challenges about depth of field, about uh, backgrounds. Yeah, yeah, I do some sci fi. So I was experimenting with cyborg uh, stuff here, as you can see. This is just fantasy. So yes, yes, I like pinups. I like. Um, single scenes, single photographs that are very expensive, uh, expressive, so, so, I'm sorry, and uh, that evoke... Would they be, uh, expensive also, expressively expensive? Well, they're not expensive because they're easy to make. They're, they're not that expensive <laughs> they're to make. They're easy to make? Expressive, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. Expensive to make. Uh, there is a cost to this, if you want to get into the nitty-gritty of it. The, um, the 3D models, because you actually have to buy them, um, do add up. We're talking about a few thousand euros. Mm -hmm. uh, so my, my 3D gallery it does cost a few thousand euros because you actually buy those models, then you have the right to use them. So, but, but they are so high quality that uh, you can even do close-ups, you can do so many things, and uh, you can see the result. You can see the result. Most of them are uh, not even, um, you know, with not uh, many modification afterwards in Photoshop and things like that. Most are like straight out, out of the 3D engine. 
but I do some uh, modification afterwards, especially if I use them for cover art. So yeah, this, these were four years ago. As you can see, I was very prolific because I was trying to create something pretty much every single day. So yeah, you can see that uh, there's a lot of stuff. And can you make a living from the art? I mean, are you selling enough? Are you selling only on rare toshi? How it's going in terms of? Selling? Well, um, it depends. You could, you could. Um, it's basically, it's a bit of luck, I think. I don't actually, I don't consider myself that much of an artist. I mostly focus on the entrepreneurial side of this. I create, um, how do you say it? I create commercial stuff. I create a product and uh, then I sell it. Okay. So it's, it's not just being an artist and uh, having the starving artist archetype. It's about creating, yes, this is the same book. She's reading this book. And the, and the skyline is a photo of Athens. Uh, this is just trying to make something, uh, you know, relevant. Um, so, yeah, I make products. I put them online. I put them for, on, for sale. For example, I'm wearing this uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, T-shirt. This is something that I design. Uh, this is available online. For example, this one is on satoshistore.io. I've uh, created a partnership. They're a Bitcoin store in Austria. And uh, now they sell my own, uh, my own artwork on T-shirts. And you can go in and just uh, buy some of these uh, Art, uh, artworks that I've made. Um, there's not much of a selection right now. It's only, I think it's only just five designs, but we'll, we'll upload more as soon as we, we see how the deal goes. Um, so yeah, I'll make, I'll make products. Okay, so for example, you know, can you see this? Yes, let this me is... stop sharing so it can be. Ah, okay. So, so yeah, this is this is a one of my artworks. It's on a it's on a mug. It's printed. Okay, this is a product. It's available online. Uh, these are all in my stores. I link them in my. I have I have my own link tree basically. If you go to my bio, I have a a links page, and I link to these partners shops, uh, in which I have my own products, and they are available for sale. So. To, to answer the basic question, can you, can you become a professional? Can you live off your art? Yes, if you do these things that I do, which are basically a way to monetize the art. Because you made this, it can go on a t-shirt, it can become an NFT. We know each other from the NFTs on Rare Toshi. I think this one has been sold on, as an NFT on Rare Toshi, the specific one. This one definitely has. And um, someone has collected it. I don't remember who. And so you have different products. You have one product. You have a second product. You have an NFT, which is another product. Okay. If you use this on a book cover, it's a different product. So you make one piece of art and then you use it again and again. And uh, because I own the, the copyright, I own the intellectual property. Okay. So I can do these things. So that's, that's the whole... Uh, idea of of becoming an artist who actually makes money um, it's you you reuse the artwork that you make in into different uh, into different areas and you create new products out of them yes. and they add up is yeah. that uh, is that a good answer to that is okay. that clear enough Definitely. Okay. Thank you very much. No, because lots of people are asking me uh, how to monetize their art and in general how to enter the NFT world. What is going to be a work? Is this going to bring value to them, or, or it's just the hype that it's being created from? Mm. Can we talk about that? Because I obviously have strong emotions about NFTs. Okay. First of all, 
the NFT craze, which we lived in last year, was completely stupid. Okay? It was blown out of proportion. We had the NFTs selling for millions. It was it was so silly. Okay, obviously, obviously, there's something wrong there. But the NFTs themselves um, seem to work just fine. Because what do we do, for example, me and you, I've seen, I think you do the same thing on Rare Toshi. We have a, a small fan base, right? We have some people who actually like our artwork. And uh, Rare Toshi is, uh, just to, to explain to the audience, Rare Toshi is an, an NFT marketplace built on Liquid, which Liquid is a side chain of Bitcoin, okay? So it can have smart contracts like NFTs and things like that. It's, it's completely um, uh, uh, connected to Bitcoin, but it can do these uh, advanced features. So basically, it's a Bitcoin uh, NFT marketplace. It's not that well known. And um, the, the prices there are not huge. It's, it's a few thousand sats, maybe a few hundred thousand. And that's it. We, you don't see these uh, massive prices and those extravagant uh, sales. But you do see a lot of um, dedicated uh, fan base uh, action. So I do have a lot of people who actually like my, uh, my NFTs. This, this one is an avatar, okay? It's from my Bitcoin avatar series. I've made a few which were supposed to be used uh, from, uh, from Bitcoiners as a, as a profile picture. And some people do actually use them. I don't, I don't have, I don't ask them to, to buy it in order to use it. Okay, it's, we don't do that uh, silly Ethereum stuff. You know, the board day yacht club where you have to own the NFT to use it. I don't care. You can just right click and copy it and just use it. And there are some people who, who like what I do and they want to support me. So they might buy a signed um, NFT from me which is only 20,000 sats or like 60,000 sats or 100,000 and, and that's it. Um, so we're talking about digital patronage. Uh, Adam uh, Back, who is a part of Blockstream, who made that, uh, who made Rare Toshi, told them to focus on digital patronage, not just NFTs. And that's what it is. It's people wanting to support you and wanting to have something that is digitally signed by you at the price that is you know just the tip basically a small donation just so they have something cool from you and um these add up last year i was um, i was easily the top seller on rare toshi i stopped at some point because uh, it, it was a bit buggy and it was uh, messing up my daily workflow um i also i all I also created much less visual art, which I couldn't uh, upload. So I, I I wound down a bit, but uh, I'm sure I'm in the I'm in the top list of sellers on Rare Toshi right now. Because uh, if if you're talking about pure volume, yes, I have uh, I have a lot of stuff up there. Uh, I don't know if our um, our viewers know. The art is supposed to be Bitcoin uh, themed on Rare Toshi, right? Yes, it's, I know. I've been warned have... about this several times. Uh, I have <laughs> another project which is dedicated to Bitcoin. It's called Truth in Bitcoin, a webinar that I have started. Yeah. Three years ago, I think. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not sure if they're that strict, but yes, the, the theme is uh, is to keep things up on, on a bitcoin uh, thematic on a you know yeah as long as i'm sending it in liquid bitcoin it's called bitcoin That's yeah the side chain and yeah, okay. i didn't know it's adam beck who is uh, behind uh rare toshi i thought it's adam saltis who is also a developer and is a creating platform yes adam saltis he's a great guy he, he keeps uh okay. doing the back end and fixing stuff for us all the time yes uh well it, it belongs to Blockstream. It's uh, like, like a separate company. And I remember uh, seeing a tweet of Adam Back who said, uh, yes, uh, that's why I told them to add the digital patronage so that they, especially during the bull run, during the NFT craze last year, 
so that we separate that whole um, silly dynamic of getting something and reselling it and uh, right. things like that. So not not keeping things for profit. I saw hmm? a tweet uh, when Adam is saying uh, that we have to use the save as right click save as option for each and every and. Actually, we, we don't mind. Our fans want to support us. If someone wants yeah. to download it, they can download it. Of course, there's no way to stop them. They could have done this from your art station page, from your gallery, from your site. It doesn't I'm matter. Really. Yes, I agree with you. That's why I'm doing it. Because honestly, I'm in IT since 2011, but professionally, I'm working for big enterprise companies, and I have never done something. Uh, more artistic so i have found out that i like painting and this is how i'm just expressing myself and i love it if you if somebody doesn't like it he is not obliged or she is not obliged to look at it and uh, not to buy it so it's it's good i'm absolutely with you and uh, on the same page with the fact that it's um very nice that there are people who just appreciate your efforts and that mm. you are uh, signing something digitally and you're associating it with uh, a block and there is IPFS cash and all these things so it's it's a good way also to learn about the technology and another thing is to raise the curiosity in other people because everybody's asking me what are you doing so I'm explaining in this way about Bitcoin yeah so yeah, very good. good and so you you are writing you're writing since since how many years so this is basically your first um uh well it now it's been a few years uh well i'm greek so first of all i was i started writing in greek obviously uh, at some point uh, about eight years ago i decided to say okay i'm gonna start writing in english and uh, i will publish some of my stuff i will put them online and whatever happens happens and that's when the need for cover art started. <laughs> and uh, I've been told that I'm a very visual person. I will answer uh, an, a, a question that everybody asks me, well, where do you get your ideas from? Well, basically, I get my ideas by looking at stuff. <laughs> However simple that sounds. I scroll through uh, things that I like that uh, have to do with sci-fi, uh, artwork. Um, I basically curate my feeds on, uh, on Facebook, on, uh, on uh, Twitter, on the things like that. And I, I keep, when I scroll through them, I, uh, it's either something artistic or I learn about something uh, which uh, might be educational, might be some science uh, article, some experiment, something interesting like that. And uh, all these things basically give me various ideas. I'm very visual and I download the photos or just take a screenshot or whatever. And I put them in folders where uh, I bundle up ideas that I have. For example, this, this project is the absolute Bitcoin project. Okay, this is a specific thing. It's supposed to be ads, advertisements for Bitcoin. And every time I see something that could be one of these i have a folder and i download it and put it there um so these are supposed to be like advertisements for bitcoin i, I want me to explain this um the we have uh, the absolute vodka which had the most successful campaign of all time the most successful ad campaign of all time which is those uh, the, the absolute uh, vodka ads which uh, we all, we've, we've all seen them, right? Um, and they basically play around with the shape of the bottle, of the vodka bottle. And uh, they do things like, oh, we're in Athens now, oh, we're partying, oh, now it's Christmas, now it's Santa, things like that. They're very creative, they're a challenge to make. And um, that's what I try to do, for example, with Absolute Bitcoin, I put, I put concepts, on uh, or from Bitcoin, for example, security. Um, I, I've even put sh uh, stupid uh, concepts like short Bitcoin, and I just made it short, <laughs> which was one of the simplest concepts <laughs> I've ever done on that. 
and uh, so to, to show something visually um, which is a Bitcoin concept well like while playing with the Bitcoin logo keeping it in the middle and playing around with it and shapes and uh, textures and things like that uh, if you go to my, I've gathered them all in absolutebitcoin.com. It's a, it's my project, and I upload all the stuff from that project on that mini site. But my ideas uh, are all when I browse through things, and uh, well, some most of the stuff is also on ArtStation. But uh, you can uh, yeah, just to make sure, you know, just allow me here to step in and to make a little. Uh that we are not encouraging people to drink absolute vodka and in general vodka, you know, so we are not promoting any alcohol drinks uh, in our podcast. We are talking about Bitcoin only and the digital art. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, I, I'm, explain, I'm explaining how I got uh, that uh, project, you know, what, what's the idea behind that project here? Yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. So here I can also see on uh, your personal website, your yeah. solidis.com, um, yeah. all your books, these, the contents are yours. So you have written them, you have edited them. So you have, or no, of course, another person has edited uh, the, the books. Uh, well, uh, it's supposed to be someone else okay. so that they have like a clearer picture and okay. no emotions to it. Uh, but uh, most of them I've worked on myself. There are, since we're now in the age of uh, AI assistants, I can actually admit that I was using an AI assistant to help me with editing. There was a, there's a tool that uh, can do it automatically and uh, suggest some stuff to fix, and grammar, you know, and, uh, and uh, okay. spelling issues and things like that. But uh, yeah, they are basically my, my creations, um, all of them. And these are the old ones. I haven't even updated the, the homepage. They're, they're all up on Amazon and on most uh, bookstores in the world. Very good. So mm -hmm. anyone who would love to read a book of you. So there are also some uh, reviews you can you can buy grab a one from amazon.com right so it's it's a nice way to know George and to see what what is in his brain and his fantasy and everything that he's creating so it's it's very interesting and aside from that do you do you are you doing something else which is not connected with art or you're full-time artist and writer and everything that is creative? Uh, well, uh, I'm a businessman. I have two businesses more okay. on top of these, this one. Uh, this one is called Mythography from Mythography Studios. Uh, this is my publishing uh, business. Um, I put everything that I write under that uh, business and my real life job is uh, one is has to do with marketing with uh, aloe vera products it has nothing to do with with uh, artwork or bitcoin or anything like that and uh, another one is uh, we have um, a yacht and it's available for charters in uh, for yacht charters in greece people come to the greek islands and they and they like to book it and have a cruise around the around the greek islands so yeah, these are the real life uh, businesses. The, the artistic ones are mostly focused on the stuff that you that I've shown today, which is the books and uh, the 3D artwork, the Bitcoin stuff, which is also artistic. Um, I've put them in parallel. Okay, great, yeah. sounds great. And, oh, and, uh, and you have a yacht, which is yours. So uh, ladies uh, if, if, and, and gentlemen, uh, I would recommend you to go to Greece, to grab a book and to spend some time on George's yacht. Yes, okay, yes. So it, it, it's, it's in Santorini, which is very popular. Yes. So, yeah, it, this, these summers we send it to Santorini, which is like a destination for uh, lots of people, uh, okay. a dream destination for a lot of people. So, yeah, 
uh, I'm sure it sounds very tempting. Definitely. Great, George. So you have so many different uh, occupations and you're working on variety of projects. I definitely mm. wish you lots of luck and abundance for 2023 and not only. May Thank all you. your projects and dreams make be, may become to fulfillment. So, and having said that, do you have a project that you're planning to release or something that, that you have not announced yet? Uh, well, uh, I maybe have sort of announced it. If it's uh, if you people are following me on Twitter, I tend to chat around about these things. I am uh, I've 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 taught a Bitcoin workshop in Greece in two different places. So I believe I've gained enough um, experience to explain how other people can run a Bitcoin workshop. <laughs> so I'm going to write a book with my notes, which will be about running a Bitcoin workshop. And uh, this will be like a practical book for, uh, for Bitcoiners if you want to run your own uh, in your part of the world. Uh, just getting some of my experiences with it. And uh, I, I'm also planning to write another book, another practical one, which has to do with Bitcoin for merchants, which explains how someone can add a Bitcoin to his business, either online or offline or both, and uh, which uh, current uh, implementations there are, so they can use it to to accept the Bitcoin and Lightning uh, payments in their business. So, yeah, these are not very artistic, but okay, I'm going to write them. So they're considered, I, I actually have to create them. So they're somewhat creative, you know, not very artistic, they're practical. But it's good because people mm. need such kind of uh, navigation and tips and tricks how to, because so once you get uh, excited about the technology, sometimes yeah. you're not sure where to start from and it's nice you're working on such a project. Okay, George, thank you very much. It was a huge pleasure talking to you. Mm. It was great meeting you and uh, I can't wait to, to see what uh, else is going to we're going to create uh, on 2023. Definitely. Looking mm. forward to it. Keep in touch and bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.